So what's going on toxic gamers? We got big drama in gaming. I was afraid to say, but I am be strong and independent. We got a whole lot of drama, man. We got, so, uh, first of all, salute to Queen BBC. <laughs> We had the captain, first we had the captain BBC, now we got the queen BBC or the queen she BC. This is what's going on in gaming, ladies and gentlemen. Put your seat belts on, like the video if you think there are two genders, dislike the video if you think there are 5,000 genders. Guys, listen, I'm not a savage, I gotta give everybody equal chances, but first of all, shout out to the homie Kai, yeah, roll it. Goncourt took 8 years to make, sub 1k first day a mistake. Top 100 they cannot break, fat flat bitches keep stepping on rakes. Black Myth Wukong, past 10 million. Genshin Impact, wax Brazilian. Dustborn a 7, but Wukong 8. IGN's government funded hate. 94k sign a sexy petition. Concord feels on a 1k mission. Comments hidden, what could be finer? Talentless Concord designer. Modern audience MIA. Journos exhausted from all the gay. Government funded <laughs> dust spawn division. Cancerous tomb, a brace for incision. Do not mention DEI. Inclusive game sent out to die. Ki Hoon Chan activist translator works for the gamer, another hater. Guardians of ESG. Ain't got a damn thing to do with me. Pronoun <laughs> robot, are you concussed? Valve's deadlock can now be discussed. Stop this LGBT man. so political. None of this shit sounds business critical. critical. <laughs> Don't erase now, bitch. It's too late. You should be proud. Celebrate. Ah! No more regression. No truth suppression. Woke propaganda now out of session. 600 players but trolls. How are How? these trolls in the room with us now? Hey, hey, whoa, whoa. Time, stop it right there. Time out, time out. Cut it right there. Cut it right there. I mean, Kyle, what, what is going on in gaming? Shout out to the homie Kyle. Shout out to the homie Smash JT. Let's get down to business. Roll it. You know what I would say is pretty important to disclose when doing a review that heavily revolves around trans or non-binary and you happen to be a reviewer who happens to identify as trans or non-binary or something other than what you actually are to maybe tell your audience that you're trans and because of that it impacts your review because otherwise you're probably not giving the full picture as <laughs> to how you got to the conclusion yeah. of a 9 9 out of 10 bumbleclot my brothers bumbleclot so black myth Wukong, it's an 8 you know uh, and the queen bbc game dragon age whale guard that's a nine that's a nine bruh like this is crazy y'all never thought that we would be sitting here and talking about a game being you know everybody's like yeah 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 yeah, yeah game sucks this and that because it genuinely sucks okay so people are speaking the facts right you speaking facts right people are saying nah bruh like this ain't it this ain't it say it psych say it psych say it it ain't so iGen is like, nah, bruh, it is 9 out of 10. I guess on a, the ga on a real though, the game is like, you know, 3 out of 10, 4 out of 10, bruh. perhaps, maybe. But I guess the game identified itself as a 9 out of 10. I guess that's what it is. Out of 10 for Dragon Age The Veil Guard. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash uh -oh. JT. IGN has been caught red-handed trying to walk back their original 9 out of 10 review by posting another article about it and how <laughs> the game might be a little bit misunderstood and the way the story arc goes, it doesn't even reference The Veil Guard at all. And, you know, maybe the storyline itself is just not really working with the original yeah, Dragon yeah, Age yeah. games and it yeah, could have yeah. implemented them better and, and all these other things, but don't worry. Yeah, could have, should have, uh, yeah, you know what I'm, could have, should have, yeah. The game's still a 9 out of 10 on our site, but we just want to let you know about all these issues with it where it's really not a 9 out of 10. Smash JT. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article breaking down how Dragon Age The Veil Guard on IGN is being walked back from the original 9 out of 10 score to, I don't know, an IGN 7, as Bioware's Dragon Age The Veil Guard drunkenly stumbles its way into the spot. So... Inst okay, first they gave it 9 out of 10, right? And now they're giving it 7 out of 10, thinking that it's actually a bad score. 7 out of 10 is a, is a very good score. If a game is a 7, that means it's like a must-buy. Maybe not a must, must-buy, but it's still like a must-buy. Feel what I'm saying? Feel what I'm saying? I'm kind of getting distracted out here. Damn. Damn. This is like the old school Lara, of course. Like, uh, she's also gonna be, you know what I'm saying? 
they, they changed her as well recently. They be changing her recently. Guys, I also real quick want to say if you guys do have Twitter or X, I would love to have you there. Links are always in the pinned comment. Check out the Instagram as well. All right, let's get back to the content here, boo-boo. Spotlight, it's becoming painfully clear that IGN's initial glowing review of the 9 out of 10 that they gave it, it was criticized by yeah. many people, yeah. including yeah, yeah, myself, yeah. as more of a marketing ploy than any kind of honest assessment of a game. And as is often the case, IGN appeared a little too eager to help boost the game get the early praise it needed to try to- More than just a little too eager. To more than just that. on the right foot, purposefully giving the game to their own reviewer who conveniently identifies as a non-binary person. Which, to me, I gotta be honest, when you start doing stuff like this, sure, you're welcome to do it, but I'm also welcome to think that you have severe mental issues. Hey, this hey, is not hey, more- Whoa, hey, tranquilo, papi, yo, hey, 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 whoa, hey, hey, chill, bro, chill, damn, damn. Like the video if you think they're two genders, dislike the video if you think they're 5,000 genders, guys. Well, this is a problem that you need to try to address in your own world. It's not a problem that you can project onto other people. But regardless of that, IGN employs this person. And I know there's already going to be people saying, why are you even talking about IGN? Who mm -hmm. cares? They're irrelevant. Look, <laughs> I'm talking about IGN because I find it absolutely hysterical about how hypocritical they really are. This is the perfect example for it. And I have to shine spotlights on this to prove exactly why mainstream media is dead and we are the new media. It seems like everyone that falls into the game industry ends up being trans or eventually identifying as that just to be able to keep their job in it. It's kind of like the theory Hypnotic always goes with. Dude, it, it, it's actually wild that it, it, it really is wild that nowadays if you're getting close to being cancelled or fired, you're just like, hey man, <laughs> I'm not a man no more. <laughs> what, what is going on? It feels like that because back in my days, right, and I talked about it previously because if you're getting cancelled, or you're about to get cancelled, you just gotta pull out a psych card, right? You just gotta be like, hey, psych! And all of a sudden, you're... Yeah, right? Things gonna calm down, and then you're gonna save your ass. It can... It works 9 out of 10 times. It doesn't work all the time if you're a man, though. Sadly, okay, sadly. But if you're a female, then you can get away with plenty of things, right? You don't even have to say psych. You just gotta say, I am strong. I am independent. But men are always just manipulating. And then, all of a sudden, you're good, right? But if you're a man... Psych card can be your best friend in 9 out of 10 situations. The the step forward or the further, the step further if if you like for example let's just say you you're getting canceled, you got canceled and you just said psych doesn't work or it didn't work, then you can be like, "Hey man, uh I identify as an attack chopper or I identify as a female." And all of a sudden it's done so it's gone so it's over, right? Then you have uncancelled your cancellation so in other words it works okay so take notes class take notes uh, i guess uh, that's what it is man uh, yeah if, the, if if you're a very good worker if you work at a company or whatever or wherever you work uh and you're about to get cancelled just be like hey man like i identify as um uh, so what, whatever you please or whatever you want to identify yourself as maybe an attack chopper maybe a baguette or whatever right whatever it could be anything right so you can actually do that and then most probably you're gonna save your ass, okay? And if they still fire you, then you can be like, okay, they're being racist, misogynistic, they're being bigot, homophobic, this and that. You can then start playing the, the phobic, phobic game and chances are you're gonna save yourself, okay? So yeah, that's how it works in the year 2024. Let's continue. With like how this DEI is implemented and injected into the game studios that anyone who's just a white male does not have a job very long unless they start identifying as- Uh, th thank God I'm brown. You know what I'm saying? Like, thank God, thank God. But, but man, I feel for my white homies. I feel for my black homies as well, man. I feel for everybody, man. These things be crazy. I mean, uh, of course, like Ubisoft, they got like programs. They, 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 they got programs in their companies where if you're a man, <laughs> you cannot enter. <laughs> you know, we saw that recently. They are having mentorship program for basically females and non-binary so if you're a man you can just say hey uh, if you want to join you can say like you're a female and then they're gonna let you in but if you're a man man they're not gonna let you in if you're a female that identify herself as a man they're still not gonna let you in i guess right because they are saying hey no men allowed in this mentorship program but see they forgot that you cannot spell and write mentorship without having men in it 
So yeah, they're having a mentorship program where men are not allowed, but mentorship cannot be written or it, you cannot spell mentorship without having men in it. Classic, absolute classic, guys. Classic. Something else. Let's take, for example, TJ Haffer, who is the reviewer of Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard on IGN. Oh, wait, did I say TJ Haffer? I meant Liana Haffer. Because, of course, someone who identifies as a chick who used to be a dude is going to resonate very well with a game that pushes ideologies of trans on. Okay, so my, my YouTube name is like Skizzle, right? I, if I wanted to, like, you feel what I'm saying? I, I guess my name would be Stacy or Susan. Let, let me know which one is better. Let me know which one is better. People, it kind of makes sense. But don't you think you'd want to disclose that bias right off the bat instead of just giving it a praising review and telling everyone this game's gonna resonate with everyone? When clearly, it's just for you. Why do this mm. though? Access Media, my friends, out of sheer loyalty to their longtime partners at Bioware. But now, even IGN themselves <laughs> can't ignore the game's glaring flaws, and they're slowly beginning to shift their tone from Liana's review to what it actually deserved. Not so subtly hinting that the Veilguard vale sales numbers are actually as abysmal as the game itself. And that's something I talked about in a Crazy. previous video that I'll reference above me here if you missed it, where I have an inside source and Demian has an inside source and we see other sources around the situation focusing on how this game, about two weeks since release, hasn't sold half a million copies yet. Damn. That's not great. Damn. Enter Matt Perslow, the latest article from IGN, who said Dragon Age the Veil Guard is at war with itself. The sequel to Inquisition's Dreadwolf story is oh, trapped in an so? action game with no interest in the past. And this is how they do it, by the way. They give it to who they know is going to give it a great score for the access media, which, by the way, Gamergate 2, this is the problem. They are purposefully making the score higher by giving it to someone they know loves this stuff, know is trans, and know the game in general the ideologies from the trans director at Bioware, Corinne Bush. Tranquilo, papi. But I gotta say, man, this is probably one of the best uh, uh, transformation we're seeing, right? You feel what I'm saying? So 2020. So brother joined the sisterhood, I guess. Welcome to the sisterhood. <laughs> Yo, that is crazy, right? Because he had like these glasses. He changed the glasses as well. So he got more of like the feminine uh, glasses frame. Yeah, so this is like more like a men frame, right? And here he's got like a female glasses frame. Damn, yeah, like she. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, go be strong, independent. Okay. He knew going into it. Yeah, so got an, like a necklace as well. Damn. So full blown, right? The hair, the lipstick, uh, the glasses, the necklace, and of course, like the, 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 so yeah, the technology is advancing. Technology is advancing. That if they wanted to continue to get access to these major AAA titles and get the early insider information, get the interviews, get the access media that they need, they could subtly nudge the score in a direction that would behoove these developers to think, hmm, IGN is on our good side. We're going to work with them moving forward and give mm. them insider access, early information, and let them be the bearer of the information so that the advertisers go to them first because they're the ones with the information and that's how the world works but now that a couple weeks have passed and the reviews are out there from the actual gamers and uh -oh. people are expressing their frustrations across the board about how this game is pushing woke dei injected ideologies pushing trans agendas these weird things that they're forcing on players making you use pronouns making you accept it and not giving you any kind of choice to reject it is a major issue with the game that gets glossed over by people that want it in the game that's the problem with all of this. So when IGN starts to walk it back with their latest article, it's just them saying, hey, you're not allowed to criticize IGN because it's a different writer mm. and it's a different opinion. Mm. So so you can't come at us saying we're walking it back because, because we have different writers that, that write stuff all the time and people have different opinions. But it's how they go about giving the access that's the problem. Matt Purcell's latest article titled Dragon Age the Veil Guard is at War with Itself reveals the serious cracks in the game's foundation that should serious. have been overlooked initially, while also carefully avoiding any kind of harsher criticism that us fans have been shouting from the rooftops, because behind all the fluff, there is a strong acknowledgement that the Veil Guard is an awkward, conflicted game, one that's torn between trying to please longtime fans while also catering to a new audience, a shallow action-based... Modern audience and now they're giving it 7 out of 10 thinking that that's actually a bad score when it's not So from 9 out of 10, that's absolutely pathetic right that that game received 9 out of 10s 9 out of 10 M Meanwhile, we had so many games over the years that just Amazing right 
you, you feel what I'm saying? I'm not necessarily talking about games that came out this year or last year. We probably at best had just like two or three games, maybe four, that genuinely were 9 out of 10, right? Very few. And I'm not talking subjectively. Yeah, subjectively, you can give any game 9 out of 10. I mean, it depends, right? Like, of your taste and the game that you want to play or you played and you ended up liking. It, it depends, right? It depends. But I'm talking objectively. And IGN reviews should be objective. I, I mean, they're supposed to be objective. But I guess what we're learning here is that it's not. So I guess we're also learning and growing with the with the fact that IGN reviews are just completely baseless and now they are giving it 7 out of 10 and they're not giving it the real score even 7 out of 10 like come on now right the game is not a 7 out of 10 it's like at best 3 out of 10 hard 3 or 4 maybe okay maybe depends on a good day perhaps you're gonna give it 4 on a bad day I guess it's like a 2 out of 10 or Bruh. something like that right but I guess in the middle 3 out of 10, right? Let, let's be real, man. We had so many... Come on now, man. It's disrespectful to give this game 7 out of 10 and, and other games below it or let's just say in this case Black Myth Wukong is, a, is an 8, right? I, I would say like Black Myth Wukong in comparison... If you're gonna give Dragon Age Veilguard 9 out of 10 because that's what they give, gave it initially, now they're giving it 7 and Black Myth Wukong 8 out of 10. If you're gonna give Black Myth Wukong 8 out of 10 and Dragon Age the Whale Guard, no pun intended, 9 out of 10, that's insanely disrespectful. In this case, I guess Black Myth Wukong is like 100 out of 10, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. In this situation, it is 110% more than 8 out of 10. Like, what are we talking about, man? This is delusional AF, and now they're giving it 7 out of 10, thinking that that's actually somehow worse. 7 out of 10, that's a good score. I mean, if a game gets 5 out of 10, objectively, that means the game is not bad, and it also means it's not good. It's like average. It's mid, it's mid, it's kind of odd, you know what I'm saying? If you're gonna give it 6 out of 10, then you're like, okay, I'm gonna get the game, but maybe not on day one. 7 out of 10, I mean, duh! You know, you're gonna buy the game. 8 out of 10, oh my goodness, man! Tell me more about this game, I, I love this game. 9 out of 10, bruh, no question, I'm pre-ordering it day one. 10 out of 10, masterpiece, <laughs> I'ma pay uh, double the price. You know, that's that's kind of like the rating for the game, man. 10 out of 10, that means you absolutely need to get it day one, even if you have to pay double the price. Of course, I'm exaggerating, but you get the idea if we're really gonna start playing with these ratings uh, right now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But let's continue. ...based approach that feels injected instead of comfortable. And IGN tiptoes through the tulips around this game's core issues. And just reading through the article, it's beyond evident that they're preparing to distance themselves from the very game that they once hyped as a potential game of the year candidate and let's mm. be honest we'll still be considered for game of the year because that's what game of the year does they always try to push the woke ideologies and ignore what gamers actually care about now if this game wins game of the year then bro <laughs> if this wins game of the year i want you i, I I want to know what would you do at that point? Would you become a monk and settle yourself on a mountain in Tibet? Yeah, I think I could uh, also perhaps think about it. But for me, I'm going to become a, uh, a monk and settle myself on a mountain in Tibet if it turns out GTA 6 is actually trash, okay? I, I said it before, I'll say it again. I'll become a monk and settle myself on a mountain in Tibet in the on, on December 32nd of the year, in the year the game releases, okay? Bruh. So I have said it before, I'll say it again, yes. But I wanna know like, what would you do if it turns out like, it, it's game of the year, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, if it, yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. Man, if it turns out it really wins game of the year, if it wins any award, maybe okay in certain aspects like, best trans game ever okay i guess it deserved to win a, a game award because it's by far the, the the best game in terms of that <laughs> if that makes sense take it as what you will maybe you want to take it as a compliment or take it as like a like or or we can give it we need to 110 percent now have worst game of the year awards as well you feel what i'm saying like the video if you agree and this should definitely win worst game of the year award 
best trans game of the year award as well so yeah but it must win worst game of the year award absolutely or to be fair though dustborn and concord is also up there i would say dustborn probably the worst game though uh, to, to be fair though yeah to be fair though dustborn should win worst game of the year and this could come like second or third place because we also got concord right fair games as well concord 2.0 is what people call it as this is what like this is concord 5 in a way because ultimately, when it comes to the game awards and the entire game industry in general, especially when it's AAA, it's not about the game and the greatness. It's yeah. about the game, Politics. the agenda, the ideology, and most importantly, the message that the mm. game pushes. Mm. And walking back the initial 9 out of 10 score they gave it, IGN's latest article focuses heavily on the absurdity of the name change, noting that not a single character in the game's 100 hour long runtime ever mentions the term Veilguard. And that's just wild to me. It's a last minute branding pivot that directly reflects the game's chaotic It's like going in America and not seeing a not seeing an American flag. <laughs> And you know what's what's crazy? And this is just an observation, no criticism. I absolutely love the fact that when I visited Miami, loved my, my time there, absolutely right. Just visited Miami a couple of uh, months ago at this point. Time flies like crazy, guys. 2025 is upon us, man. What What is going on, man? COVID, you remember the Roni situation? That happened back in 2020, bro. It's going to be five years around, uh, you know, uh, March when the lockdown happened. And we, and we first heard about the Roni situation in December, I believe, of 2019. You remember that? Crazy man, it's gonna be five years next month, or I guess in March of 2025 when the lockdown began. Crazy man, but yeah, a couple of months ago I went to Miami, and ever since I went there, I'm extra hyped for uh, GTA 6. And one thing that I really noticed was that everywhere you go, it's like American flag. They, it's like you're in America, and they want you to never forget that you're in America. America, if you. No criticism, just an observation, because when you come back here in Canada, or um, yeah, when you come back here in Canada, it's like. Canada? Hello? <laughs> you know, there's like no Canadian flag. At least me. Yeah, I, I don't even remember when was the last time I saw a Canadian flag around uh, the city. That's crazy. I, I Yeah, I don't remember, to be fair, though. You know? I don't remember seeing a Canadian flag in Canada. I guess at the airport you would see, like, they want you to understand that, yeah, bro, you are in Canada. <laughs> you are in Canada. Uh, thank God you are in Canada. It, it's like one of those things right uh they they just want to reassure you and make sure you are in the right place and you did not mistakenly flown in another country so in that aspect yes thank you canada for making sure that there's a flag there at the airport right but once you leave the airport you do not know where you at though you you feel what i'm saying you do not know but in america everywhere you go america america so it was uh, kind of like crazy so same situation right in so they're talking about whale guard but there's no whale guard in it interesting interesting guys check out this video on the screen because recently the homie asman gold was contacted by fbi you want to know why the situation is wild okay check this video out and i'll see you right there